I would act like a, like a fool in front of class, like doing all the actions. And for example, like we do command verbs and I would tell the kids, okay, copy me if you have to, or make it funny. And we would do stuff like, Jigue, come here, you know. But then the opposite, Jigalasi, go away from me. They would go like, Jigalasi. And then people coming up to me, like, especially grandmothers, so it's like, hey, Kurt, my, my little, my granddaughter told me, Jigalasi. And I'd laugh and they would say, Where, did they, you learned that from Mr. Michael? And they're like, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Skidegamuch. I grew up hearing that word, skidegamuch. It means ghost or spirit. You know, if we're sitting around my friend's house and we hear something drop in the, in the sink, like at my friend Simon's house, I heard, we heard dishes falling and stuff. And oh, skidegamuch, ghost. Then there's another word, outti. It means road. Upon learning words and, you know, trying to regain my language, the word skidegamujuwauti came up. And I'm like, hmm, what's that mean? And it's the Milky Way. Yeah, the spirit's road or the ghost road. So I'm like, wow. And to me, it's like, that's a spiritual thing. Our culture, our beliefs that from, from a word. Like when we passed on our soul or spirit, we travel the Skidego Mojiwauti on the Milky Way. So see that one word sort of just opens your eyes and give you the, the, the value of our, our, our peoples and how we thought back like before colonization. When speaking Mi'kmaq, we have what are called animate and inanimate nouns and verbs. People, animals, stars, they're considered animate nouns. However, buildings, rivers, flowers, they're considered inanimate nouns. And depending on which noun you're speaking about, the verbs will also change. When it comes to the explaining to the students or people, anyways, animate and inanimate, well, it's, there's really no best process. It's kind of hard sometimes, like a fork and spoon. A spoon is animate, a fork is not, okay? And also clothing. Uh, a shirt is animate, pants are not, okay? But you, you have to sort of grow up speaking the language to, um, to know naturally. The Mi'kmaq verb nemig means I see a. So in Mi'kmaq, you would say nemig miyokjij. That means I see a kitten. Kittens are considered animate, so you would say nemig. If you wanted to say you see a noun that's considered inanimate, you would say nemidu. It also means I see a. Uh. Flowers are considered inanimate, so you would say nemidu wasawig. I see a flower. Nemig miyotjij. That means I see a kitten. Nemidu wasawig. That means I see a flower. We have what are called um, elongated vowels. For example, the letter A is a. Uh. But if you said, if you had written a apostrophe, it's not a, uh, it's ah. Uh. It's a little longer. And they're very important, especially placing them in Mi'kmaq. <clears throat> Here's an example. The word gesalul. See that? It's, it's kind of fast, so there's no apostrophes. It's gesalul, which means I love you, right? I tell my wife, gesalul, I love you. If you were to take the same word, K-E-S-A-L-U-L, gesalul. If you were to put an apostrophe on the letter A, it changes the sound of the word. It would be kesalu. And that means I hurt you. Totally different than kesalu. I, I love you. Okay? So, and let's take it a bit further. Okay, let's add two apostrophes with the E and the A. Kesalu. That means I throw you in the fire. <laughs> so, can you imagine telling somebody, you know, I hurt you to the moon and back. <laughs> the language can differ from community to community. So if you'd like to learn more, I'd encourage you to seek out or ask a fluent speaking Mi'kmaq person or an elder. Better yet, how about you go visit a fluent speaking Mi'kmaq elder. Go have a cup of tea and hopefully some loose skin again. Say see you, Miyotjij.